Hey guys, MattCraft.derp here, and uh, welcome to the top 10 Dragon Ball games! I'm finally concluding up Dragon Ball week. I'm sorry for the delay, because, you know, the next box had to break. But of course, you won't be seeing this until the day after I upload Battle Z, so I'll probably cover all that stuff there. So, you know, we're good. We're good with um, discussing all of that. Um, I actually haven't recorded that yet. I'm getting my Xbox back tomorrow. It is fixed. Um, but first, the first thing I'm gonna do when I get it is play Xenoverse. Um, it is the 26th to today, so that means I'll get it on the 27th. So yeah, I'm a few days late on that. I don't know when this will all be uploaded. Um, hopefully soon. Maybe uh, I'll try this weekend. If I don't just go on a rec if I don't just decide I don't want to edit crap, I'm going on a recording spree of Xenoverse. <laughs> Uh, cause I, I plan to let's play it all, but you know, th that might not happen. But anyways, to conclude up Dragon Ball week, I'm gonna do a top 10. The top 10 Dragon Ball games I have played. Um, I don't, I've only played 11. Um, I t I'm going to talk about them all on this list, though, but it's still a top 10. Not a top 11, but kinda. You'll see what I mean at the end. You'll see, just, just it's fine, it's all good. Um, do, so I should better, I better get started. This is completely unscripted, so, yeah, uh, mostly unedited if I take long pauses because I'm trying to think of what to say. I'll probably cut that, of course. Um, but yeah, let's get right into it with number 10. Coming in at the top is Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2. Uh, the reason Budokai 2 is so high is because it's, it's a bit of a black sheep in the series, um, Sure, it introduced um, the Budokai series to and this Dragon Ball games as a whole to both the Buu Saga characters, because those weren't in Budokai 1, and um, Cell Shading, which transferred on into Budokai 3, which was really good. Uh, but the thing that most people don't like about the game is the story mode. It works kind of like a board game, where you have to fight everyone multiple times, and it's... It's really weird. I did a <laughs> let's play of it on my channel here, um, but I was using an emulator that goes at like a third the speed of the actual game, so that's probably not very pleasant to watch. And I never ended up beating it because I completely messed up by not equipping crap, and um, so I pretty much didn't stand a chance against Kid Boo, and um, I wasn't going for like all the Dragon Balls and this stuff, but. Uh, I think if I ever get to replay it, if I ever just happen to see a copy at my local um, used game retailer, if I happen to see a copy of Budokai 2 for the GameCube, then I'll definitely pick it up. Um, just because I want to play it again at normal speed. Um, I won't be able to let's play it, of course, because I can't let's play GameCube games <laughs> unless it's at 30% speed. <laughs> or I can find it on a another system. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, a lot of people just don't like Budokai 2 because of the story mode. It's really not very good, though the gameplay in the battles is not that bad. I mean, it's mostly identical to Budokai 3, and um, for what it did uh, in terms of adding Buu Saga and um, Cell Shading, I think that we, we can be grateful to Budokai 2, but... Um, if you just skip from Budokai 1 to Budokai 3, you're really not missing anything. If you played Budokai 3, you really have no reason to play Budokai 2. Uh, Budokai 3 is a far superior game. I don't usually like to compare games to later games in the series, but in this case, I feel it's necessary. Um, it's not a terrible game, I'm just saying that all the other games outshine them. Speaking of terrible games, though, on to number 9, we have Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. Uh... Which is, by the way, my new, you you heard this yesterday, and even in the update video I said when my Xbox was broken, Battle of Z is my new least favorite game of all time. It's terrible. The only reason it's above Budokai 2 is because Budokai 2 is identical to Budokai 3, or if, but worse. I mean, Budokai 3 did a lot better, so it's outshined, and... To be completely honest, Battle of Z, since it's a 3D game and it tries, it at least tries new things, um, it's better as a Dragon Ball game than Budokai 2, but, like, if I had the choice to play Budokai 2 or Battle of Z, I would play Budokai 2. 
at normal speeds. Actually, no, I'd play Budokai 3 because I'm not missing <laughs> anything. <laughs> but, but just if you've seen my Dragon Ball Week um, videos, you know you know how I feel. You know how I feel about this game. It is not a good game. Um, it's completely unfair. It it switches from easy to hard at different times, and it just doesn't function. It's I can't believe they let a game like this be released. And um, I would I would hope that Xenoverse isn't worse because I haven't played it yet. Um, as of the time I'm recording this, of the, of the time you upload it, you know I pl I've uploaded it, this. You know I've played it. I played it a ton. Um, but um. I would hope that Xenoverse is better, but I really don't think I have to worry about that. Like, there's not even a slim chance that Xenoverse could be anywhere near as bad as Battle of Z, even if it tried. Um, hell, I haven't even played Dragon Ball Z for Connect. I hear it's terrible, but it's. I I think I'd rather play Dragon Ball Z for Connect, to be completely honest. <laughs> Though, I'd probably put Battle Z above it on a list like this, because once again, Battle All Connect is, is a carbon copy of um, Ultimate Tenkaichi with, with um, Connect motion controls that are sometimes even unresponsive. So, though I haven't played it, so I can't really stand for that. Um, I'm probably never going to play it. <laughs> if I never get my hands on a Connect, it'll be in the far future, and then I can play Sonic Free Riders. But, you know, you heard what I have to say. If you didn't, go back and watch the um, update video, Dragon Ball Week, dot, 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 question mark, and um, yesterday's episode, um, day six of Dragon Ball Week. So, and that's all I have to say about the game. I don't feel like going on a rampage right now. One game I didn't get to talk about, though, is number 8, um, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 2. Um, because I meant, I meant to do a day on that, um, and then, but then this top 10, I never would have got the idea. But I can't do a day on that, because I had to replay through the game on my Wii U, because, um, I need to get those specific battles, uh, because I can't record my Wii so I had to get those specific battles done, so, and I couldn't, didn't want to risk doing a data transfer, because my friend did that, and he got a bricked Wii, uh, and plus, I, I don't want to waste data on my Wii U, so, yeah, there's that, because I, like, get digital copies of, like, all my games, but the thing about, uh, Budokai Tenkaichi 2 is that, well, the reason I couldn't, first of all, I couldn't record it was because the game, the disc stopped being able to be read because it was a bit scratched up, and it stopped being able to be read at the Tree of Might levels, which I don't even know why those are mandatory. Like, because I only needed to do the final Frieza fight, the, the Goku versus Cell fight, and the Kid Buu fight, just the main series. Like, I was just going to ignore the what-ifs in the movies. I don't know why the Tree of Might is mandatory to do. <laughs> that's, that's stupid. Um, though I have played through the entire game, I guess I just didn't remember that directly. Um... But that's really dumb. <laughs> it just it just stopped loading, and I shouldn't have even had to do that. But like, that's that's not really a big complaint because I have played through the game, and um, once you get the hang of it, it's really fun. But the main reason I don't like Budokai Tenkaichi 2 is the controls, and I'm specifically talking about the Wii version here. I think if I played it with an actual controller, like the Wii Classic controller, or um, in the PlayStation 2 version, then I wouldn't dislike it as much as I do. Because the motion controls on the Wii just don't work for Budokai 2, because you have to, like, aim the cursor, like, up and off the screen, and, like, to the side and the back, and, like, sometimes the sensor bars really, um, it doesn't work very well. Probably works better than Kinect, you're just saying. Uh, but I think the main reason, uh, the motion controls are okay when you get used to them, but the main reason I dislike them, um... It's probably because I played Budokai Tenkaichi 3 first, and that game's motion controls were far superior to Budokai Tenkaichi 2's. And the only reason I even bought Budokai Tenkaichi 2 was because somewhere I read that it might be better than Budokai Tenkaichi 3, and boy were they wrong! Oh, oh, Jesus, they were wrong. Uh, but, uh... So really, they aren't terrible controls. Um, they do kind of ruin the experience because I played Budokai Tenkaichi 3 first. 
Um, and plus, I'm pretty sure the PS2 versions, I'm playing it with a Wii Classic controller, it won't, wouldn't be that bad. Uh, so yeah, um, disclaimer right here, uh, all the rest of the games on this list are all, um, I like them all. I did not like Battle of Z and Budokai Tenkaichi 2 and Budokai 2, you know, I, I just had to put it at number 10 because it didn't really do anything different. Uh, of course, for its time it did, but like, it really didn't. But, why, why do you think it wasn't on the Budokai HD collection? I mean, really. So, uh, this, I like all the rest of the games on this on this list, so I don't really have much bad to say about them. <laughs> um, so, at number 7, we have Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure for the Game Boy Advance. Now, you have the Legacy of Goku series, which um, uh, I have not played all of, so I couldn't put it on this list, because... I really haven't played that much of it. I started the Legacy of Goku 1, which is probably a mistake, because I hear the second and third ones are way better. Uh, the first one's just really unresponsive. So I might just skip to the second one someday. But uh, that w those weren't the only Game Boy Advance games. There was also Dragon Ball GT Transformation, which I've also not played, and Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure! And um, Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure is a 2D beat-em-up. And it kind of has RPG elements, like the, uh, like the Legacy of Goku games, but not really. Um, I did a Let's Play of it on my channel, a, a full Let's Play of it, and, uh, I think that Let's Play really shows how I've developed over the past, uh, over the early stages of me, uh, doing Let's Plays and stuff. <laughs> but... Because I went through, like, three microphones and, you know, puberty and all, all that crap. I still voice crack. You'll probably hear me do it at least a few more times on this, uh, thing. But, um, it's, it's a solid game. Um, I, I like what it does. Um, it, pl it platforms sometimes. It, uh, has good fight. It even has some fighting game elements in the multiplayer and, uh, survival mode. Um... And I really like it. it. It gives you the option to play as multiple characters in the extra and Krillin modes. And, um, it has many different playstyles, like the flying stages on the Flying Nimbus. Uh, and I really think that those make the game what it is. Because you can get, like, upgrades for your Kamehameha and Power Pole. And you can find all sorts of neat treasures and knickknacks, um, especially in extra mode. Uh, where you can also get the Dragon Balls, and it, it retells the story of the entire Dragon Ball series up until, up through the King Piccolo saga, because of course you can't have adult Goku, um, uh, so I, that, I don't really have much to say that I didn't say in the Let's Play, um, it's, it's a really, it's a good game, it's definitely worth, um, at least looking at if you haven't, and playing for yourself, um, uh, if you like beat-em-ups, if you like Dragon Ball, You'll, you'll love it. Okay. Now, at number six, <laughs> speaking of not having adult Goku, well, number six is Dragon Ball Z Attack of the Saiyans. Uh, now, what I, what I would like to talk about here is how, it's what an RPG really is, because most RPGs, I'm probably going to get some hate for this, saying I'm wrong, which I might be, I don't know, are turn-based RPGs. Such as Final Fantasy, Dragon Warrior, uh, Pokemon, oh, all sorts of the popular things. But then there are other RPGs, which are more so beat-em-ups and fighting and all sorts of stuff. Um, such as the Legacy of Goku series. But, uh, you, you would think that after playing the Legacy of Goku series, that that's like the solid... Dragon, that's how an RPG for Dragon Ball Z could be, and I don't really classify that too much as an RPG. It's like, uh, Super Paper Mario, which is a platformer, but it also has RPG elements, and, um, some people classify the Kingdom Hearts series as a hack and slash. I haven't played that, because I haven't really had the means to. I don't own a PlayStation or anything, so that could be a problem. As soon as I do, though, like, on a PlayStation 2, I'll, I'll get a ton of Dragon Ball games and get, like, some good experience to the series and exposure. Because um, once again, I haven't played that much, but I do love what I have played. Um, but with Attack of the Saiyans, it is a turn-based RPG, and it, it's it's a really solid one, especially if you're a fan of Dragon Ball Z. Um, 
even if you haven't seen Dragon Ball, which I really think that all Dragon Ball Z fans should have seen at least Dragon Ball, but uh, not all of them have. Uh, I really think they should have, but you know, not all of them have. So I think Attack of the Saiyans is a good game for those people, because uh, they get to start with the Piccolo Jr. saga. So in case they don't know what happened and why Piccolo and Goku are enemies, See, voice crack right there. What did I say earlier? But, in case they don't know why Piccolo and Goku are enemies, it's a good exposure to what Dragon Ball is, and then they'll be like, hey, you know, this is pretty cool, I think I'll go watch Dragon Ball. Plus, it, even for people who have seen Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, it, it even has some what-if stories about what um, Krillin, Tien, Chiaotzu, and uh, Yamcha did before the that tournament, the... Piccolo Jr. Tournament, the 23rd um, World Martial Arts Tournament, I believe. Um, and some more the stories about what they did in between their the conclusion of their training with Master Roshi, because they did do that while Goku was training with Kami, and the tournament. And I really like what it does in What If. It even covers some filler elements, like what, Goku, what Gohan did while he was training with Piccolo. And I really like what it does, because... I don't know, one of the things I don't like about, um, turn-based RPGs, like, or I guess RPGs in general, such as Final Fantasy and Dragon Warrior, is the random encounters, which Attack of the Sands does have random encounters, but I don't know, I felt, I, I liked them, um, I thought they were really good, um, now with other games like Pokemon, which I also like, you get to control when you... Um, get random encounters, such as when you get into the tall grass. And while you can't necessarily do that here, I still, I still think that it's it works for game, and it's one of the few RPGs that I actually like. Cause I'm not big on RPGs. Once again, I say the only reason I play Pokemon is because of how really limited it is, and it's not just like choose four characters, you're stuck with them the entire game. And I know like. The recent RPGs aren't all like that, or like you have a gazillion characters, choose them, and it's just like I don't, I don't know. I, I haven't played that many RPGs. I really need to though. Um, I need to play more. But Attack of the Sands is a really good one. Uh, you only have six characters you need to worry about. It's it's solid. It goes um, through the Piccolo Jr. to the Saiyan Saga. It really needs a sequel. They teased it a sequel at the end, and I really think that it could benefit from one. It has some bonus content, such as a boss fight with Broly at the end of the game, which you're gonna need to grind for, by the way. Just uh, just saying. And uh, the <laughs> saying. Way to go, me. And uh, the grinding's even not that bad in this game either. Um, and that's really all I have to say about it. Um. I'll do a let's, I promise to do a let's play of it, or I'm promising now, I don't know if I've ever said this on, um, recording, that, uh, I'll do a let's play of it as soon as I get a 3DS capture card or a way to record DS games, uh, so, so that'll be cool. So, moving on to number five, we have Dragon Ball Revenge of King Piccolo for the Wii, the only Nintendo exclusive console 3D Dragon Ball game. I had to add on a lot of adjectives there, because uh, then you can go back to the SNES and NES games, the card games, and it's just, I, I, I didn't like those. Um, of course, I've never played through an entire one, which is why I can't put them on the list. So, Revenge of King Piccolo, I feel, is an upgraded Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure. Of course, I played Revenge of King Piccolo before Advanced Adventure, and... Because it's a beat-em-up, it kind of doesn't have the platformer aspects that Advanced Adventure does, but, I don't know, Revenge of King Piccolo's solid. It, it, it doesn't start at the beginning with the um, Emperor Pilaf saga, it starts at the Red Ribbon Army saga, and um, one thing that I really like that it does is it redid all the voice acting. So, the voice actors are new and improved instead of just cut and pasted from the anime, which I really like. Um, it's a really fun game. It has more strategy than an advanced adventure, which still had some strategy to it. Um, because there are new forms of like dodging, and uh, there are even collectibles in stages. Um, you can find chests around them, just like in um, other Wii games like uh, Wario and Shake It or Kirby's Epic Yarn, which I like. Um, I think that was that gave the game a lot of replayability. And, um, 
I think I think it's a really solid solid Wii game. Um, I did think that the final boss, the final King Piccolo fight, was a bit too difficult. Um, but you know, you know, I, I haven't done it in a while, so I could probably take him down now. It's it's a it's a really cool game, and I like the cutscenes in it, and um, the voice acting is great, and it tells the story well. One what if that it did that I really liked was how it said the Bear Bandit from Episode Three uh, st uh, started working for the Red Ribbon Army under um, Colonel Silver, and I thought that was really clever because uh, we don't really see the Bear Bandit again. Um, and he, I don't even know why he was there. I would say he's filler, but he's in the manga, so why I think. I don't know. I'm about to read the manga. Soon. So I just finished Draco the Galactic Patrolman. Anyways, um, moving into some familiar territory. I think everyone will be familiar with the next, with the last games on this list. Um, at number four we have Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Budokai 1. Um, everyone, everyone knows Budokai 1. If you're a Dragon Ball game fan, if you're a diehard Dragon Ball game fan, you've played Budokai. You know what it is. I have a work in progress let's play of it I did a Dragon Ball Week video of it um, I said just about everything I wanted to say on it because it's just it's it started the series off sure there were the fighting games on the SNES and all that but for console 3d fighting games of course it was still 2d cause the entire Budokai series was it didn't get 3d until Tenkaichi um, but for for a console 3D graphic um, fighting games, as far as they go, it's it pretty much started the series off, and it's what made the series what it is today. I think it's the first Dragon Ball game made by Dimps, and uh, th hey, they made the universe. So who knows how that'll be? Everyone but me, because I'm the only one who hasn't played it yet, except for my friend who's grounded. But you know, forget about it. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, Budokai started the series off, um, Budokai 2 advanced the series onward, and Budokai 3 was pretty much just polished, polished Budokai 2, and, um, I don't know why I'm talking about Budokai 3 yet, um, but yeah, it was the start of the Budokai series, sure it didn't have the Boo Saga at the time, um, even though the game that preceded it even was, uh, GT Final Bell, which was mainly focused on Dragon Ball GT. But you know, it it, it it was fine. It didn't need the Blue Saga. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure why it doesn't have it, but you know, it, it was good. It had good cutscenes, uh, a bit long, mind you, and it skipped a lot because it didn't. Um, it had it actually did have some characters that um, the later Budokai games didn't have, like Android 19. That did, that wasn't a thing, and um, it doesn't make you select your own attacks. It pre has them. Um, except in versus mode, um, much like in the Budokai Tenkaichi games, in the story modes, solid, of course. Um, and it even has some cool bonus content, such as the highest character it does, Goku. Goku. I meant to say go to, but it came. Okay, that's nice. Um, uh, is the great Saiyan. So once again, I'm not sure why they didn't have um, Buu Saga, but you know. And plus, there's a Legend of Hercule mode. Uh, where you can play things as Hercule, and to, to unlock Hercule and the Great Saiyan, you have to do the World Tournament of different difficulty levels. And it, it, it was a really cool first exposure to the series, if that was your first exposure. As a matter of fact, it's the first Dragon Ball game I saw. My friend had a GameCube, and I saw him playing it one day, and that's kind, that friend got me into the Dragon Ball series as a whole, so I am extremely, eternally grateful to him, because I, I just love the series, and I love the games, and just, Budokai was so influential. <sighs> but here's a game that wasn't influential, that he, I'm, I'm gonna get so much hate for, y you, saw my, you saw my Dragon Ball Week video of it. The one game that everyone hates that I actually really enjoy. At number three, we have Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tenkaichi. I talked about it in Dragon Ball Week. I talked about why everyone doesn't like it and why I do like it. Uh, I, I really like the graphics. I think the system, the quote-unquote rock, paper, scissors system, does have some strategy to it. Because um, some characters like alternate between it. Um, whether they'll hit X or Y, and it's really 
you just know. One major complaint I do have is the boss battles, which run on quick time events, not motion controls. I know I said that. I put in it and edit. Uh, the, but uh, I really don't like the quick time events, but they're easy to get past. The one thing I really hated that bothered me for the longest time was the button mashing on the boss battle quick time events. That that takes me off so hard. And one thing I didn't mention, go into much detail in for uh, the Dragon Ball Week video was character creation. It had its own character creator mode. Of course, you couldn't do much with it at start, but it gave your character their own story about how they're saving the world from Omega Shenron. Which, by the way, he shouldn't have been in the game, by the way, because there just one random battle at the end that was Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta versus Omega Shinron, and only, that's the only character, only sign of GT in the game, which is kind of dumb, <laughs> to be completely honest. But, um, it, I, I think if Ultimate Tengaichi didn't have character creation, then Xenoverse wouldn't have character creation. It was the first thing to do that. Minus Dragon Ball Online, which was, it was unofficial. Though I think Akira Toriyama had something to do with it, I don't know. Um, and plus the universe is heavily based on online, so I cannot wait to play that tomorrow. <laughs> Jesus, uh, and you'll see it th tomorrow, too, so it's good that I'm recording this when I am. <laughs> Even though it's kind of delayed for you. So, yeah, I talked about Ultimate Tenkaichi. I've talked about all I like about it, all I don't like about it. Um, people say it skips a lot in the story. I disagree. People say it has a bad character roster. I disagree, though its character roster does only go into um, what it does in its story mode, which I don't think that should be how it how it goes about that. But um, I still think it's pretty solid, and um, I, I like it. A lot of people don't. I do. It, it has its 3D and 2D moments. It's really cool. And you know what? I, I I really did like it. Um, if I ever play Dragon Ball Z for Connect, hopefully that doesn't tarnish the image of Ultimate Tenkaichi in my mind. Um, so on to number two, we are in some solid things here. Now, as soon as I say what number two is, all of you are gonna go straight to the comments and be like, "Well, what about these two games?" And look, look, I I know what you I know what you're gonna say. I know what you I know exactly what you're gonna say. Just calm down. Just, I, look, just don't, don't, don't panic when you don't hear these games, okay? Don't panic. I'm getting to that. Just let me talk about number two, and then I'll discuss both of those games in number one. Alright? Alright, okay? Because until you hear that, you won't know which one it is, okay? So don't, don't, don't go accusing me of things yet. Yet! You can accuse me of things later. Okay, so at number two, we have Budokai 3, um, the other game on the Dragon Ball Z Budokai HD collection, Budokai 1 and Budokai 3, and I did talk about it briefly, um, I talked about it in the Dragon Ball Week, um, video, and I plan to do a playthrough of it in the future, um, basically what it does is it has, um, different characters' perspectives of the story of Dragon Ball Z, and you can equip your own things as you unlock them. You can explore over the overworld, which, uh, Budokai 3 was the first one to have free roaming, uh, to get from place to place, which continued in Budokai Tenkaichi 2 and Ultimate Tenkaichi. Is that really it? Huh, I think, I think Xenoverse might have that. Though I could be wrong. I, I don't know. I think Xenoverse is going to do that a little differently. I'm not sure. But once again, I have not played it yet. As a matter of fact, I have the freaking disc right here. I am holding it right now, but I don't want my Xbox to play it because it's broken. Screw it. Um, so, I've talked about Budokai 3, what I think of it. I really like how much the graphics are improved in the HD collection. So you just want to replace this number with the Budokai HD collection. And then we'll have plenty of room for the Budokai 2. Um, then I I think that that would be fair. Because, well, uh, it's just a really good game. I don't really have much to say. It even fixed um, the combo system problem with Budokai 1. I can't speak much for Budokai 2, because 
I didn't really get to play it right properly, and once I get to, I can probably move it up on this list. Hopefully. Hopefully I can move it up past Battle Z. You know I want to. <laughs> um, I think it's because it's, no, it, it, it is still generic, and Budokai 3 really outshines it. Um, and what Budokai 3 included G some GT characters, and by some, I mean Omega Shenron and Super Saiyan 4, Goku, Vegeta, and Gogeta. Is that really it? It didn't have Pan? Uh, I guess it did not. Oh well, it's still good. Pan and Giru were in the, um, were, were in the uh, file select screen, though. Well, not necessarily file select, like load data screen. So that was cool. And, uh, yeah, so that's all I have to say about Budokai 3. So finally, moving on to number one. Number one, my number one Dragon Ball game of all time. You're panicking. I know you're panicking. I see you panicking. I'm psychic. No, not really. Number one is a tie, so you can all just relieve yourselves. Go, go, to, pause the video, go to the bathroom if you need to. Just, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. We have a tie for number one between um, Dragon Ball Raging Blast 2 and Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3. The debate has been long going. Which game is better, Raging Blast 2 or Budokai Tenkaichi 3? I am here to end that debate. They are equally good. Um, sure, Budokai 3 may have... But, not Budokai 3. Budokai Tenkaichi 3 may have more characters. But, of course, Raging Blast 2 has some characters that Budokai Tenkaichi 3 doesn't. But Budokai Tenkaichi 3 also has some characters that Raging Blast 2 doesn't. Obviously, why it has more. Um, and the Universe will have a significantly larger roster, so that'll be cool. Um, so, that's... That's about the gist of it. That's comparing the games. Um, I talked about both of these games in the Dragon Ball Week episodes. I plan to do Let's Play, uh, Let's Play Budokai Tenkaichi 3 eventually, of course. Um, eventually, definitely eventually. Uh, not sure about Raging Blast 2, because I can't really Let's Play that, because it doesn't have a story mode, unlike Raging Blast 1, which I do need to get my hands on, and then I could do a Let's Play of that. Um, Raging Blast 1, I d yeah, I definitely need to get my hands on. Uh, Raging Blast 2 has improved graphics compared to Raging Blast 1, which Raging Blast 1 looks kind of sh cell shaded with the improvement of the graphics in, and um, in um, Raging Blast 2, I think it kind of got rid of the cell shading, but it still lo it still looks really good um, in HD, and it's re a really cool game. Um, it has all the characters you'd ever want, minus GT, of course, even though Android 17's alternate costume is his GT costume. Um, it, it's the only game in the series thus far to have characters like, um, Tarble from the Japan-only special, Yo, Son Goku and his friends return, he's Vegeta's brother, um, Hachiak, um, <laughs> Once again, from a Japan-only special, which they actually condensed. That special was even based on previous video games, uh, card game ones, and I didn't like those. Uh, though I haven't really played through an entire one, so I don't know, it could grow on me. If only any of them were English, <laughs> uh, that then it'd be a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, so it has a an HD shortened version of that movie. Uh, that was, once again, Japan only. It had Cooler's Men, um, Salsa had been in previous games, the Budokai Tenkaichi games, um, and maybe Raging Blast 1, but never Dor and, what was the other guy's name? I can't remember, Dor and, uh, Salsa, Dor, I, it, do, it doesn't matter, um, but all Cooler's Men. Then it had Androids, uh, 14 and 15 from the <laughs> Super Android 13 special, and uh, they've yet to appear. They're not going to be in Xenoverse. None of these characters are going to be in Xenoverse that I'm talking about. Of course, while well, in Budokai Tenkaichi 3, which had a ton of Dragon Ball GT characters, much like its predecessors, Budokai Tenkaichi 2 and uh, 1, um, did, those characters are going to be in um, Xenoverse. And plus, there are going to be some... No, there's not going to be Dragon Ball characters in Xenoverse. There were some Dragon Ball, the original Dragon Ball characters in Budokai Tenkaichi 3, which had... It just had the best character roster you could ever ask for. Um, 
And, and for that, specifically the character roster and that it has a story mode while Raging Glass 2 doesn't, as much as I hate to say it, this could be purely for nostalgia. Of course, um, Raging Glass 2 does have some nostalgia with me, but Budokai Tenkaichi 3 just has more. I like Budokai Tenkaichi 3 more than Raging Glass 2. Don't, don't hate me, don't hate me. Raging Glass 2, I do like. It's, it's so ever so slightly under... Budokai Tenkaichi 3, um, still above Budokai 3, so this could be a top 11. I only said they were a tie, not to tick people off. I, I do like Budokai Tenkaichi 3 more, um, I really do. I, I like how it controls slightly more, because I, I, I really do like the motion controls. It, they're super responsive on the Wii, um, of course, controller, um, controls, I'd probably prefer... Raging Blast 2. Of course, that HD remake of Budokai Tenkaichi 3 ever happens, then I'll... I guess I'll learn how that is, and I'll probably like the original better, because I really like being able to actually do a Kamehameha and feel like I'm doing the Kamehameha. Uh, instead of just, oh, wave, wave your cursor to the left and then back on the screen, and then, hey, he's doing a Kamehameha! And then just not launch forward, which is really unresponsive to shoot it if you don't want to charge it up. That's Budokai Tenkaichi 2. I'm still ranting about that, aren't I? Uh, um, so yeah, I like Budokai Tenkaichi 3 slightly more than Raging Blast 2. Don't hate me for it. I guess this is a top 11. Raging Blast 2 is number 2. Um, but, you know, you know, it's all it's all good. Um, I'm, I'm going to play Dragon Ball Z Universe. We'll see where that fits in. And plus, this, this could still be a top 10 if you even count it being a um, Budokai HD collection. As soon as I play... Um, more more Dragon Ball games, and I get a 15. I'll revise this list to see if my opinions have changed by me replaying games. Um, because I plan to play games like Dragon Power, which was a Dragon Ball game before it got Americanized on the NES. Um, the Legacy of Goku 2 and 3 I'd like to play. Um, probably not 1. I don't know if I can sit through 1. Uh, Xenoverse I'm going to play super soon. I'm super excited. Uh, if, if I can re-pick up Budokai 2, um, and play through the entirety of that. Once I finish, once I, if I do another Let's Play, if I do a Let's Play of Budokai 3, I could start hating it. <laughs> Though I probably, I probably won't. That's a really good game. It, it even has RPG elements, which I forgot to mention. Um, Though I did mention that in the Dragon Ball Week, so, um, yeah, so that is my top 10 out of the 11 Dragon Ball games I played, technically top 11, because I did, I kind of cheated, but I wanted to talk about them all, um, and I, I really plan to extend my library of Dragon Ball games that are played over the next year, and, uh, I cannot wait to do that, I can't wait to play Xenoverse tomorrow, finally, oh my god, I've been waiting so long for this, I, <laughs> It was so unfair, or unlucky, more like when it broke. Uh, my Xbox 360 stopped reading discs. Oh, uh, can't believe that had to happen two days before it came out. It it sucks. It really sucks. Um. Anyways, I'm Matt Craft at Derp, and I'll see you guys next time. This is day seven tomorrow. Matt Craft plays Dragon Ball Z Universe, unless the file corrupts, in which case it won't be a Matt Craft plays anymore. In which case it's that that'll be really bad and i'll have to make a video explaining because that that has never happened before where the it corrupted except in my first one left for dead 2 which i tried doing but you know then i was just like yeah I, I don't know if i should upload this um i need to play more of that <laughs> eventually eventually my friends um anyways i'm at crash Reserve, and i'll see you guys next time dragon ball z universe hype which everyone's already gotten rid of because they've already played it <laughs> Gosh dang it, 40 minute video. Bye bye! See you all next time.